for somebody that needs you out there. So Lord, now hide me behind the cross that they will see none of me but all of you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Help in the time of trouble. We all know we are living in some troubled times. And I'm sure many of you know this, that there are Christians who believe that just because they've accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they will not have troubles in this life. As a matter of fact, Deacon Mormon, they believe that because a Christian is blessed and highly favored by the Lord, that their lives will be one of continuing blessings. Of course, when you read the Bible, we know that this is not necessarily the case. And New Providence, I want you to know this morning that as Christians, we will, we will experience troubles. But along with the troubles come the blessings, which I'll speak of later. Walter Hawkins sung a song that says, Everywhere I go, there is trouble. Everywhere I go, there is strife. Everywhere I go, there is something that worries me. But my God is standing by. And then he went on to say, God is standing by. No need to cry. God is standing there. No need to fear. This song is truth put to words for the truly God is standing by. But then there was another song by the late Mahalia Jackson. It said, soon I will be done. Miss Jackson sung this song with uh, such emotion that you knew it came from a lifetime of seeing God through her troubles. It says, soon I will be done with the troubles of this world. Troubles of the world. Troubles of the world. Soon I will be done with the troubles of the world. She said, I'm going home to live with God. And then she said, no more weeping and wailing. No more weeping and wailing. I'm going home to live with God. And so as you can see, the words of this song expressed the feeling that although we are experiencing troubles on this side, the day will come when troubles will be no more. There'll be no more crying. Our sorrows over there, for we will be in the presence of the Lord. But until that day, I want you to take a step back with me and ask yourself two questions. If I am serving God, and doing what he has told me to do. Why do I have troubles? And what do I have to do to be blessed if I am constantly experiencing troubles? What I need you to understand, my brothers and sisters, is that we are blessed because of our relationship with Jesus Christ. It comes with a benefits package as being born again. When we recognize that our relationship offers us help in a time of trouble, we do not feel that we are alone. So then how can I find help in the time of trouble? And it's all around me. I'm glad you asked. Come with me, if you will, to another Psalm of David. Although he was a man after God's own heart, David still had troubles. As a matter of fact, David stayed in trouble. Look at Psalms 27, beginning with verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I feel? He's the strength of my life. The first line of this verse opens up with a personal confession. That God is my light means I can never be in darkness. He's always there for me, illuminating me, showing me the way, giving me divine directions and ordering my steps. All right. No matter how small the light is, I will always find my way in darkness. And therefore, David went on to say that with God being my light, he makes a difference in my life. The second assurance that the Lord is also my salvation means that I am saved. I'm assured of going to heaven. I am sure of being a winner. 
coming out on top in every situation and circumstance. I'm assured that I belong to Jesus and that he will claim me as his own. See, I know where my home is. I have certainty. I have a future that is assured, that is blessed, that is bright and glorious. Praise God, somebody. Whom shall I fear? Principalities or powers? No, I fear none of that. Evil and wickedness and witches and wizards? No, come on somebody. For the Lord is my light and my salvation. And then he said, the Lord is the strength of my life. Wow, that means that, that I am anchored to the rock of ages. The power for God, the Father Almighty, the one that gives me life and power. I am plugged into the socket of the greatest power in the whole world. Come on, somebody. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, the reassurance that David was saying, uh, what he was saying is, of whom I shall be afraid. God is the greatest power in the earth and on, uh, in heaven. So no matter what's going around us, come on, somebody. He, David said, if therefore if I am connected to him, he supplies my strength. He gives me strength for my life. And I cannot be afraid of anything. God is greater than anything. Everything was created at his word. He ordered it and it was created. And therefore I cannot be afraid. Because the one that created all the things on the earth is my power and my strength. Praise God. Then he went on to say when the wicked, even my enemies, come upon me. See because we are connected and draw strength from God Almighty. Any power, principality, any foe or enemy that wants to oppress us or har uh, harass us, it will fail. And since I do not rely on my own strength, but on the strength of God Almighty, he will bring his strength to bear against all my enemies. Come on, somebody. My enemies. Have you got that? You know, they may be vile and merciless, but I don't worry because the Lord is my strength. Whom shall I fear? Can, can you get that right now? No matter what they intend to do to me, he is my strength. And because God has given me the power to tread over serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy, I can step on their heads. Hallelujah, somebody. Glory to God. And then it goes on to verse 3, say, though a host shall encamp about me. That means that there's a troop of soldiers, of military forces all around me. But still I will not fear. Come on, somebody. Because I will be confident in this. The psalmist, in fact, said that the word surround means that they're kept around about you, trying to attack you, to destroy you, and to kill you. But yet the psalmist says that even if a host encamp around him, his heart will not fear. So when, when, when trouble comes out of way, and when it looks like there is no way out, just say, I will not fear. For this I am confident. Come on, somebody. I shall not be afraid of anything or anyone because I am confident. Even though war shall rise against us, in this we will be confident. And then we go to the verse 3 and verse 4. One thing. One thing. Yeah. Can I say that again? I love that. Yeah. One thing have I desired of the Lord, oh, yeah. and that will I seek after, right. that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, yeah. to behold the beauty of the Lord and the quiet in his temple. See, here David is asking for just one thing, and that is to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life. Yeah. And many of us, if given the choice of just, just, just one thing in life, some of us will choose money, Wealth, possessions, and positions, and power, and titles. But, but David said, one thing have I desired of the Lord. So, so in other words, what, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? See, the psalmist therefore chose the most important thing. It is his desire. Come on, somebody. To dwell, to get close to God, to go into the house of the Lord. And brothers and sisters, this just might offend somebody. But you see, when COVID hit the church, we did close down. But then look at God and what he did. Yeah. Made it possible for us to come back. And then we still got somebody. Come on, somebody. Ah, choosing comfort 
and convenience and complacency. Oh, I'm going there. And convenience, yeah. I don't have to take off my night clothes. I'll just sit here and drink my coffee. Now, I'm not trying to down you, but I'm saying, David said, let us go into the house of the Lord. In other words, come out of the pressure. Come out of your despair. Come out of your little bittiness and come and worship God. I don't care what you've been going through. Don't wait until it's too late. Come. Come to the house of God. Come to the house of God. And then the summer's men is that he wants to be tuned in to the things of God at all times. To do the will of God. To abide in him. To offer him praise. To meditate on his word daily. To live his life according to God's word. To dwell upon his promises. To meet with the saints in the temple. And when we attain to this level, we then can dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of our lives. But then Mary Hagin, what else are you saying? The essence of being in the house of the Lord is to behold the beauty of the Lord. And to inquire in his temple. I love when the saints get together. What a time we have. You know, we can look at it. We can hear it. But it's nothing like being in the presence. That's right. Come on, somebody. Amen. In the presence of the Lord. You see, staying out there, it's all right. It's all right when you have to. But when you're in the presence of the Lord, come on, somebody. There's healing in his name. There's deliverance in his name. Oh, their yokes are being broken in his name. To behold the beauty of the Lord. And then verse 5 says, for in the time of trouble. And there will be trouble. Yeah. Notice that the psalm, psalm said, in the time of trouble. Many Christians believe that once you become born again, troubles will not come. But I beg the difference. Yeah. That's when all hell breaks out. Yeah. Are, are you with me, church? Yeah. If you are anointed, come on, somebody. Yeah. Expect the devil to show up at your door. Yeah. But be not dismayed. Yeah. For he said, in the time of trouble, yeah. he shall hide me. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Look how God will hide you. Rather than leave you in the face of storms and enemies, he will hide you in his pavilion. That's why it's important to come to church so you can be hidden in the pavilion. In the pavilion. And so, my sisters and brothers, even as God has kept others, he will keep us. He should set me high upon a rock. And now this appears to be a contradiction, right? When you try to keep something safe and hidden in a secret place, you do not go ahead and place it upon a rock. If you did, the enemy could attack. However, in our case, it's different because we serve a mighty God, a God who hides us in the secret place of his pavilion. When the storms are raging, come on somebody, and then he will set us up upon a rock. When the winds have died down, and as a sign that he has given us the victory. Oh, I wish I could have some help in here this morning. Have you not been set upon a rock when the enemies are all around about you? When the winds began to blow, come on somebody. And the lightning began to flash down, come on somebody. God set you a high upon a rock that you were able to look down at your storm. Y'all don't hear that now. Yes. And then finally verse 6. And now shall my head, my name be lifted up above my enemies and therefore I will offer into his tabernacle praises the psalmist continues in this verse with the victory that God has given now that God has set me upon a rock of course I am now elevated high upon above my enemies with my head now lifted up above my enemies it means that my enemies are lying down in the valley of the shadow of death amen injured and disoriented come on somebody see because these wicked enemies who had earlier come to eat up our flesh have now stumbled and fallen do y'all get that right now you, you see notice the way the enemies are round about me but then they become confused come on somebody that's why i say praise will confuse the enemy when you come into the house of the lord and as i get ready to take my seat like david said therefore i will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy i will sing yay i will sing yet will i praise him oh i feel my help coming now so i'll just write a comma right there minister minister bradley because i expect something else to happen after then for i shall yet praise him with what is left i will praise him right now with what strength i have left in me i will praise him right now with what breath I have left in me, yet with what I have remaining, I will praise him. In spite of my trouble, I will praise him. In spite of COVID, 
in spite of cancer, I will praise him. In spite of kidney disease and mental depression, I will praise him. In spite of loss of loved ones and death and toxic relationships, I will praise him. In spite of what I'm talked about, abuse and misuse, I will praise him. Come on, somebody. I'm going to fight back with my praise. I'm fighting back with my worship. I'm fighting back with my songs. I'm fighting back with my thanks to God. I'm fighting back with my hallelujahs. I'm fighting back with the Lord is good. I'm fighting back with my faith. I'm fighting back with my hope. But not only that church, yet when I praise him, I'm going to seek his face because his face means help. If I keep on praising him, God will show his face. If I keep on bragging on him, God will show me his face. If I keep on extolling him, the Lord will show me his face. If I keep on lifting him up, he will show me his face. If he inhabits the praises of his people. And so if you want God to show his face, just keep on praising him. His face says he's present. His face says he's with you in your time of trouble. His face says, I see what you're going through, and I will not leave you. His face says that his ear is attentive to your cry. His face says that his mouth is about to speak the word of deliverance. His mouth is about to speak healing. If you praise him, oh, my anointing is coming. When I praise him, I am not afraid. I shall not be afraid, for God is causing all things to work out for my good. Don't write a period there. Just place a comma and rejoice. Finding help in your troubles. Will you please stand? Yes. Yes.